But I think you need something that uh, makes plays happen a little bit earlier. Ember Spirit would have been fairly good. What about a Ricky? No, there's no way. Really? You don't think so? You don't think there's any chance? You've got no chance, Ricky. I never do, man. That's why I'm still single. <laughs> That's why you're here with me casting on Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh, boy. Tramp Protector, uh, great pickup. Shout out to the viewers, by the way. You guys are my Valentines. Yeah. I asked Neff. Thank you said for no. being you. Five, so. I said I'd rather have the viewers. I'd rather have you guys. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Neff, you really uh, blood lusting after chat right now? Okay, back onto the draft, though. We see Lifestealer. Uh, what do you think about the Lifestealer pick here? It's like decent to the Pango. Not good against uh, Bloodseekers. Uh, rupture though this is a rough one yeah i mean you can deal with it you can usually stand your ground uh just like pop the rage tp out whenever it tries to drop the rupture blood ridge onto you you've got allies you can hop into with infest um but yeah they definitely have go potential onto you i think you need a little bit more hard lockdown for the life stealer at this point though uh, i'm a little bit concerned about uh like dealing with his rage so bkb piercing disable or like uh instant disable so you can follow up with several uh Hits with that Rolling Thunder. Uh, Lion, Shadow Shaman are two that come to mind. I like Rubik as an instant disable, but I don't think he'd be good this game. I just don't think that Shadow Shaman fits into this game. Lion would be an option. I don't know, eight seconds of reserve time left. They need some sort of hard lockdown for this life stealer. Right. Let's uh, go back for Yarn, Shadow, Shadow Shaman. Shaman. Yeah. I mean... It, it didn't feel like super overwhelming last game, but it did have some good plays. It does mean we're going to be seeing Stone Bank on the Bloodseeker. Kind of as you were talking about, it is expected, I think, at this point, based on the draft. It isn't a hero that fights up really well into the Lifestealer as like a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Like Lifestealer just doesn't care like against any of the spells. Like He just kills you. So in that yeah, regard, but if you get that a instant, sense. Yeah, if you get the jump onto the Lifestealer, then it is great, though. Yeah, if you can silence him, if you can condition. actually connect on the blood right, this hero is uh, pretty weak because Lifestar is not a hero that builds like BKB or Manta or anything like that. He usually relies on like status resistance. Yeah. But now they run into the issue uh, where I don't think they have enough damage. Pangolier is kind of limited on what he can. Five seconds. I mean, against strength heroes, it feels like Pangolier's damage is always underwhelming. Mm -hmm. Bloodseeker doesn't scale as well as some other cores. Wow. Ogre Magi drops his spell and he's done. Shadow Shaman is. Not a ton of damage on support. Decent disable. I mean, you can hit towers. Dude, this Treant pick is so sick. Like, the more, the more and more I look at this hero, like, it's actually just going to own the lane. And it's a tree. You can, Come you on. You can cancel Rolling Thunder, basically. Yeah, uh, like, this hero is actually such an issue because if, if you ever aggressively swashbuckle in the lane, Treant will just come over and whack you for, like, 100 damage, and it's really easy for the Lifestealer to gap close. This is a really good yeah, pick. Yeah, but it's also just a tree. It is just a tree. The Whomping Willow, dude. Ten seconds. I do love me some Tramp Protector. I used to play this guy as a carry back in Han. Five uh, seconds remain. I was uh, decent at the Hero for a period of time. But gonna... he ended up getting nerfed pretty hard after that. Completely ignore the fact that I said I played him as a carry, a one position. I'm going to completely ignore oh, that, yeah. Oh, my You have to keep Lord. in mind, uh, I am good friends with the, uh, the CEO of Wildcard Gaming. and He's a former Dota 1 pro. And he talks to me all the time about his crazy Dota theories and his tree protector mid and uh, making these ridiculous strategies work on Lycan and uh, how, you know, hey, these are good strategies because he was really good back in his glory days. So uh, it's just all white noise to me at this point a shout out to griff by the way thank you for getting involved in na dota this is uh, a pretty sick spirit breaker pick though it's very yes, good yes. uh very good spirit breaker pick you all right there Neff? yeah griff's gonna yell at me later i'm sure it's fine uh i mean i was surprised that spirit breaker ended up making it through kind of it's making it through a little bit more it's fairly solid here. I mean, they don't... Uh, Mars is kind of going to be forced to build a Yule Scepter here. You can counter it out with um, 
Actually, no, they don't have any amazing counters to it. Uh, Mars is essentially have to be the control for the Spirit Breaker this game. He's forced to build a Yules in order to control them up, and it's going to be Rayla Lisa on it. So this is the mid lane. Yeah, uh, I think this is sick. So they, it has to be a mid lane, right? Like looking at the draft, like it's not going to be Stone Bank or Luki playing it. So um, you get this mid lane matchup into the Mars. It's actually not that bad. Like, you are right. I think DNM, or no, sorry, not mid matchup into the Mars. It's mid matchup into the Tinker. But I think you're right in the fact that DNM has to go for a Yule Scepter this game because they don't have any tools at stopping the Spirit Breaker. Pingu might also pick one up himself on the Triant because it is a very good Yules game. But uh, we'll see what we can they, they can do with the Spirit Breaker mid. Like, if it manages to pop off, this is like a hero that actually takes over this game. We'll see, though. Tinker could just pop off and uh, stop all of that from happening. We'll see. Uh, it really depends on... Uh, whether or not these camps get warded inside the dire triangle at the beginning. So they're going to have to make uh, an early smoke over to that one and make sure there's enough pressure on the lanes that the sports don't have the opportunity to rotate out and uh, start getting the, the D wards and building up stacks for them. So we'll have to see. The first couple of minutes of this game, I feel like are going to decide a lot uh, rather than just like a complete outdraft like we saw in the previous game where they use an uphill struggle the first couple of minutes. Well, the first like 20 minutes in then one crucial mistake cost them everything as they start to get back into it be a good match though i do like dog champs draft much better this time around uh, than the previous game and this was the first team to make it through the qualifiers in north america so in theory they should be the better team right actually no it was the cut that made it through dog champ lost the cut in that match all right never mind uh dog champ's done I yeah, yeah I was going to say, wait a minute. The cut uh, yeah. beat Dog Champ twice, I believe. Yes. So uh, that was a quick 2 0, in yeah, fact. Yeah. yeah, cut looked very good. Yeah. Uh, smoked up here on the side of the cut has just finally expired, though. Hmm. I love this Ogre Magic. I just come to lane with four Mongos. You just know you're going to have a rough time. M Mongos? Yeah. Nice. It's uh, just a quirky pronunciation of the word mango, in case you didn't catch that one. You're very quirky and cute, Ricky. Uh, mostly quirky. Less cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Today's your day, Ricky. <laughs> it's my year. <laughs> Come yeah. uh, 2022 is going to be your year, buddy. 2022 is the year of the singles, man. It's our year, everybody. Yeah. Ooh, B9. Yeah, definitely got a second uh, guess going for that rune when there's the nature's grasp there. DNM. Oh, it's a pushing him to the low side of the high ground, and he'll be all right. Blood right there. We'll be able to push them away. Okay. All right. So, unfortunately, uh, no wards on the camps. And uh, they actually put a Observer Ward up on the high ground uh, to catch any early invasions from uh, players on Dog Champ. So Tinker's camps are going to be well defended. The question is whether or not uh, Giant is going to have time to move over into the triangle to get these stacks for Tinker. Oof. How do you feel about the mid lane matchup, by the way? Uh, I mean, it should be Tinker favored. For sure. Like, there's not much Ray Lisa can do to, like, outplay the Tinker um, in this matchup. Like, it's, it's pretty much just going to come down to, like, you get levels on t on Spirit Breaker and you start ganking and try and find kills and, you know, get get a couple of, like, your essential items early. But you're not going to be able to, like, outfarm the Tinker in last inning in lane. Like, Tinker will just laser you and then deny some creeps. Yeah. Uh, I agree. <laughs> a rough lane for uh, the Spirit Breaker. He can always use the Bulldoze to uh, like dodge some of the duration on the laser, but you really want to max out your bash and charge, so... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be putting any points into... Well, maybe one point in the Bulldoze. He might just put a single point into uh, the Charge of Darkness here. Bulldoze is incredibly good, even once it's a single point in it. 34% status he just comes in clutch. Yeah, Being a damage. bash here is actually might get a kill on the kits. Yeah, but go, go, for the tower. go for it. Eee, that's a I lot of extra mind. damage. Don't go for oh, it. Oh no. 
I mean, this is one of those things where it's like you take the the like trade you got because it's not worth dying for, and oh boy, <laughs> that is first blood for the tinker. You die. I can't believe that guy listened to me. <laughs> yeah, Nev, how could you? Yeah, I mean, if you win the trade against the tinker there, you're actually pretty happy because he can't contest you for like CS as well until he gets like bottle and stuff, and now you're just like dead. So I'm sorry, that's... I led you astray, Ray Lisa. How could you know? He definitely heard your comms. Yeah. Get out of his head. <laughs> yeah, his mid lane is going to be really rough. And there it is, laser, and she's going to miss some CS. <laughs> God, that's so miserable. Uh, he still actually has 10 last hits, but he is pretty far behind in uh, experience now because of that death. Yeah. And that's what this hero needs. Uh, experience is helping you farm uh, so much faster. Top lane. I thought we'd see a Shaq coming out of Scourge McTech, but it looked like uh, Luki didn't want to commit. Living armor makes it pretty rough, too. Ooh, swashbuckle there to cancel the salve immediately. Okay. Very optimistic salve there. That's pretty good. He's going to... I mean, another what, one, two creeps here. Oh, my God. Yarn is absolutely insane on these tonight. I mean, he's got 77 yeah, base damage. Like, he dude, be. he's like the ranged tree and protector. He's got so much damage. Yeah. <laughs> And Life Sealer is not a hero that particularly has a lot of damage. I mean, he's using double gauntlet, iron branches, and a quelling blade to try and secure last hits. Right? Like, he has to boost his attack damage a lot here. Typically relying on feast otherwise, right? Yeah. But this lane's in a really good position, and Luki's having a fantastic time here. Yeah. You know, Man, he's having we haven't really talked about lane. this lane at all. Stone Bank oh, on the Bloodseeker. It's interesting. Uh, Bloodseeker and uh, Ogre Magi against uh, Mars and Grimstroke. This isn't going to be interesting. Uh, I feel like you do have kill potential here on the Grimstroke and the Mars, but only if uh, you know, Bloodseeker lets his HP go down. Kits might eventually be able to make something happen if he makes a rotation. It's like a single uh, Hitsiki missile, but... They got the uh, stun onto the Ogre Magi. He's trying to hobble away. DNM in pursuit, I think. He can get him. Uh, he's gonna make it underneath the tower, pops the salve. He is fine. Turns around with an ignite to slow him down. Spear on the mark. DNM with the cons review gets it. Okay. Stick around just a little bit too long. Underestimating the amount of damage there from the Mars. Well, your woos come out. Uh, not in a good way, though, from B9. And uh, Raylisa is having a super tough time now. A full level behind on XP. And charge with the creeper. Get the last of the I'm actually gonna do a decent amount of damage on over to DNM with the TP back in from B9, but yeah, not a lot that you can do. You, uh, you do need stacks one... as well eventually for this Spirit Breaker to clear. He's got the three points in the Greater Bash, but uh, at the moment he is really struggling on this mid lane Spirit Breaker. Yeah, I was gonna touch on that. Uh, Yaren did end up making one stack for him, but. Uh... Thankfully, they put enough pressure down on this bottom lane. I guess they ended up finding a kill. Oh, Giant might go down here. He does get the ink swell off. Stuck inside the blood right, though. Nature's the extra uh, armor. armor. He's going to spear him back him. in the tower if he chases, so he yeah. can't go. Ah. Uh, unfortunate. But uh, I was going to say, they've been putting enough pressure on this bottom lane uh, between the Bloodseeker and the Ogre Magi that uh, Giant hasn't had the opportunity to leave lane and uh, go and stack any camps with the Tinker here the first uh, six minutes. And I think he, had, yeah, he was just told he should be stacking camp camps. I think he gets this one. Yeah, he gets this one for sure. Very embarrassing if he doesn't. Thank you. Caught by Shaco Release is like, ah, eh, screw this. I'm charging out of here. <laughs> no. Um. I don't know what you do really against this Tinker. Like, you're gonna need to be able to play aggressive with the Spirit Breaker, but you're not getting there anytime soon. Net worth wise, Kits at the very top, Bloodseeker and Pango right behind him. And Luki actually went to a little bit of an interesting build. A lot of times we see uh, Pangoliers max out Shield Crash. He's actually gone for three points in the Swashbuckle, which is not typically what you expect. Very different from the standard Pangolier. But he is a professional. I will trust anything he does. Bottom lane, Mars. Stunned up. But uh, pretty tanky. He's fine. He's got double bracer and a soul ring. DNM is 1,200 HP. That's a thick boy. Yeah. 
That guy is uh, absolutely massive. A large lad, even. He's just going to get to exist down here for the next uh, couple of minutes. Once he gets level 6, I think he's going to make a rotation try to find a kill. Actually, Stonebank almost level 6. But DNM, I think he realizes that uh, he's pretty close. And now that he sees he has a level, I don't think he's going to show inside the lane. At yeah. least uh, not when he's not beside his tower. Absolutely. I mean, you can always TP in Top to uh, deal with this Scourge. Gone on by Luki. They do have the mana for Rolling Thunder if he wants to pop the Mango, but I don't think they continue this charge, especially now that it's been scouted by a ward. They continue this charge. He is continuing the charge. You are absolutely correct. He has Rage, right? Okay, does get it off. Luki pump faking that Rolling Thunder until that Rage expires. Will connect now, but he's facing the wrong way. In comes this laser from Kits. Will connect with the Rolling Thunder for the moment, but SMD down to 50 HP. Can Luki guess correctly? He does. The question is, he's going to look for more. No, he will TP home. Okay, beautiful gank. Well done. I thought for sure there's no way that works, but uh, color me impressed. Well done, Dog Champ. Uh, one of my good friends... Uh... <laughs> When we played on Felt, uh, one of his descriptions of Luki to me one time is, uh... <laughs> the man is absolutely cracked on this hero. Even if he somehow loses the lane, uh, sometimes. Uh, which, you know, like, does happen on his bango. He's not the perfect player in any way. Uh, sometimes he'll make a mistake or something like that. He somehow finds a kill he has absolutely no business finding. <laughs> and gets back into the game. <laughs> It's just a uh, standard uh, pango type stuff. Uh, B9 obviously knows they have a ward there thanks to the missiles, so he'll eventually get the D wards. He has already a sentry placed, ready to go. Fairy's trinket for the tinker. Man, it doesn't get better than that. Yeah. But look at net worth so far in this game. It's Dog Champ at the top, and they're holding three of the top four. Well, I say that and instantly uh, cast her curse. But the Spirit Breaker has recovered pretty decently thanks to a lot of the stacks in the jungle. But this hero does farm very quickly with four points in the Greater Bash, just charging through camps and happens to have an Ocean Heart infused raindrop. So he's got plenty of mana to play with. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Spear Arena will find the Bloodseeker. He did get the Rupture out onto the Mars. He's trying to hobble away, but the rest of the team, they're coming in fast. Question is, will he be able to finish him off in time? The laser from Kits. He gets the kill. The charge from Ray Lisa. The Nether Strike will find the kill. The question is, can the Tinker actually get out? Yarn with the shackles, holding him in place. Stroke of Fate doing a quite a bit of extra damage. Kits ends up finishing him off. Charge not for a few more seconds, and it looks like Kits might be able to make There's it out of here. Second. B9 with the vision. There's the charge on through. Do they finish him off? They do indeed. B9 gonna pay for that one. Ray Lisa underneath the tower. No TP available, but 14 wand charges. He's fast enough and tanky enough to walk away. Yeah, and he does, and <laughs> he's got the bottle. He managed to find the bounty rate on the way out and does see that they have uh, ancient stacks and hard camp stacks here. Pinku is trying to grab it uh, up one more time, but not quick enough. Hey, Dude, really, he's going to get this haste. Are, uh, are you the Bloodseeker? Because the, the, the further away I get from you, the, the more it hurts, man. Happy Valentine's Day. Ooh, it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> He'll say yes eventually, chat. Don't worry. Top lane, they're pinging out SMD. Thinking of going in. He just infests and bounces immediately. He saw Yarn thanks to the war. He's gonna drop these uh, Serpent Wards onto the tower, trying to do as much damage as possible. <laughs> He's catapulting down. <laughs> <laughs> the wards. This is the slowest. This is the future. This is the future of Dota 2. It's a good looking catapult, though. I'll be honest. Good old Cardi, man. Dude, he's gotten most of these wards. He hasn't denied them. Yeah. I think it's time for him to drive his sick ride out of here, though. Yeah, Can we get a close up on the, the sick ride, by the way? Yeah, he's Tokyo drifting oh. himself to uh, some creep yeah. camps. Uh, sick ride is gone. Bottom lane. Charging from Ray Lisa. DNM. I'm actually throwing any spells to cancel it out, so. Ray Lisa probably knew something was up if he went for that. Looks like they want to take this fight, though. The fact they're TPing Tinker in. Ooh. He gets the arena out onto two. Double silence as well. DNM. God's Rebuke. Spear is still available. They don't even need it. Charge through from Ray Lisa. It doesn't connect on the spear. 
They get the kill on one. Kits is a big one. Rolling Thunder comes through from Luki. They need to be able to chain stun him down, and the Bash is going to allow him to do it. Rupture also onto the Mars. Kits goes down. DNM about to be next. The Swashbuckle will allow Luki to grab himself a quick double kill. Beautifully done from Dog Champ there decimating them uh, with that entry there by uh, three heroes and only the the tree protector had his level six he was in the middle of that team fight he's gonna stop pangolier from getting in he's gonna stop the majority of the damage coming out from the blood seeker with his auto attacks and uh stop the spear breaker in his tracks as well but uh, we're like 12 minutes in thank is still only level five That's i mean rough, you talked about the strength time. of the overgrowth this game I'll be honest, I mean, the exactly voice lines in the uh, battle pass are very good. They're all very, very, very fun. Shout out to uh, Dragon's Blood, the Dota anime. Season 2 for providing a bunch of really good content. <laughs> Love anime. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do, buddy. <laughs> I think someone in chat, uh, they were saying that my Valentine is the poster that I have behind me. That it's makes technically sense. true. It, it is 2D, so that would make sense. Yeah. Okay. Tinker, farmed up now, going for the Aghanim Scepter. He's got the Blink Dagger done. I think he, I think he needs uh, Tree Protector to start moving around the map a little bit more for him to figure out exactly who he should be going for. Right now, it looks like they're hesitant to invade uh, Dog Champ's side of the map, but... They need to be playing a little bit faster. Is he really good up? Look at this. All right, look at look at the jungle where Tinker is. Seeing this? Right, he's doing the smoke thing. This is for a single stack. He's popping a smoke to clear this one out. I mean, this is common stuff, but usually when you have like a four or five stack, and it's like three ten minutes that you do this. I actually have not seen this been done before, so it's kind of funny. Yes, you have. I mean, I've seen it with like Phantom Assassin using blur and stuff, but it like. I haven't watched like a Tinker player yoink a smoke to clear a jungle stack. That's pretty bad. Yeah, you have. <laughs> have I? Maybe I have. Yeah, uh, trust me, you have. Uh, you casted every game with a CND PC. Yeah, that's true. No. Maybe I blocked the Tinker moments out of my mind. It's hard to say. That's, that's possible. Uh, nothing to say was doing this on Tinker. Oh, that's right, dude. That was disgusting. Yeah. Uh, he had like, I don't know. Like an eight minute blink day or something like that. Super gross stuff. Diffusal picked up on Luki. I don't know if you pointed that one out yet, but. No, I didn't. Pretty good pickup for this hero this game. Able to burn out some mana. Lifestealer is one of those heroes that really does rely on his mana just to get like his one or two crucial spells off. So do need to be careful about that. Arena dropped by DNM there. Just gonna be able to punish the ogre. All right, you've got the nice. Shadow Blade picked up on the Spirit Breaker. Going for the BKB. I mean, does he go BKB or just Ags next? That's the real question. I guess he has to probably go BKB this game, thanks to uh, heroes like Mars. Yeah, everything. I mean, it's miserable if you go to the middle of the team fight and he's able to do anything. Uh, has to be able to get the overgrowth off himself as well, so we need some sort of dispel the BKB. Solid choice for that. Hey, Neff, uh, take a look at the kill score. Ah, it's the funny number. It's yeah. the funny haha. -ha. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> mid tier one tower. Plenty healthy here thanks to the Triumph Protector. Serpent Wards, though, gonna get dropped through a lot of damage. So they're just doing their best to keep the catapult alive as well, but. Eh, they do manage to do so. All right, nicely done. So I think with that, Dog Champ should be able to grab the tier one tower. They are TPing in the Tinker, ready to go. B9 just tanking this one right in their face, but doesn't seem to matter. There's gonna be the overgrowth. The match gets a Bloodseeker as well. Rolling Thunder from Luki. Seeing if they can grab these heroes. They have the Rupture onto DNM as well, and Luki just causing so much havoc in the backside. Another Strike will also find Giant. He gets an extra bash to boot, and they take down two. DNM sitting very low. Managed to dodge out. Uh, last hit of that Rolling Thunder and the Swashbuckle, so he survives that one. But uh, trying another one, realizing that I, I think they wanted to keep their mid tier one alive. They figured, okay, we'll be able to defend this one if we get in here quickly. But uh, execution was just a little bit late. Then they were hard committed to the fight. Yeah, B9 was just uh, the sacrificial lamb. Like, go for it. Try and kill me. I don't care. I've got a plenty of uh, plenty of heroes here to follow it up. 
Ends up paying off by, uh, big time. <laughs> oh, Yarin. Yeah, be Yarin's. careful. Yarin's dead. Yeah, Blinken. Oh, instant hex. Pops the pig mode. He's out, right? I'm kidding. He's definitely not out. <laughs> Arena, All right, comes Arena committed. Yeah. All right. You'll take those. <laughs> That's a, a I work love moment chat lines, sure. man. They're so yeah. fun. Definitely worth it. Spirit Breaker charging down uh, just into the creeps here. They could probably go on to him here. He is a little bit too far forward, but they're gonna take a fight top instead. Luki, rolling thunder, gonna ooh, get canceled, but manages to get it the second time around, and he's got a lot to play with here. I know, he just leaves. He's like, forget this, I don't wanna risk it. Kit's able to dodge it out with the blink DNM. Hobbling through, gets a swashbuckle on by, but the charge from Ray Lisa. he had the vision, trying to stay on top of the Tinker, there's going to be the Nether Strike, Soulbind onto two, Inkswell as well, already on the Tinker, nice laser, doing some damage, I don't think they're going to be able to get him, yeah, Kit's able to, t uh, to blink away, but you are going to lose the Grimstroke, you already lost the Mars on the backside of this fight, so they try to commit onto Luki, ends up getting punished pretty heavily. Yeah, I mean, uh, man is way too tanky. It's able to get out of there. I mean, he ended up going to defuse it, but you'd think uh, it goes down pretty easily. But yeah, you mentioned uh, very heavy punish and no overgrowth of that team fight, unfortunately. Or Steeler, not really part of it either. I think they expect to be able to hold their ground a little bit more in these team fights, but the people running at you were all pretty tanky. Uh, Pango, Spear Breaker. Uh, I mean, Bloodseeker usually feels a little bit tankier than he should be, and of course, uh, Ogre Magi. Difficult to blow any of these heroes up. It gets a lot easier once the Aghanim Scepter is done on the Tinker. Uh, he got his Blink Dagger done in decent timing, but he's definitely slowed down since then, although he's got it now. Just gets the gold for it. They'll probably start taking more aggressive fights. Yeah, I would think so. I'm, I'm honestly feeling like dog champ is just going to continue to scale very well like this spirit breaker if he can manage to keep his eyes on this tinker it's going to be such a nuisance instant d ward in the mid lane nicely done there from b9 he's bending them out right now by doing his best to go for the infest play here to dnm looks like they're going to be smoking up here shortly after yeah Oh, they just blink in right away. He's found Yarin as well as the Ogre Match High. The laser beam just doing work. Man, just stun him up. Lugu the Rolling Thunder, but instantly canceled. There's going to be the Overgrowth as well. Stone Bank will pop that BKB. Trying to run away here. SMD, he's got that rupture on him, but saved thanks to that damage absorption from the Tinker. Oh, does it actually work against rupture? I have no idea. It well, does absorb damage, damage just in general. I imagine it does. Yeah, it does. It also plays Daz resistance on you, so uh, the rupture will expire a lot quicker uh, if he's got it on when the Bloodseeker applies the rupture. Which is very dumb. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The stupid hamster ball ability should not be an ability. Uh, not to mention they gave him free boots to travel, it's whatever. And yeah, it's fine, you know. All oh, balancing all things, I'm sure. Ray Lisa getting aggressive onto Giant, but doesn't have uh, much mana to work with, so he's gonna have to back on out. Yeah, but uh, Tinker can just like continuously run at you now. Yeah. Yarn ends up going down to the homing missile. How much damage do you take from the missiles there? Let me see how many throw. Oh, just two. Still very annoying. It's surprising that he opts to go uh, the Nether Shell. I guess he values the magic resist uh, when he's playing against the Spirit Breaker. Pangolier does automatic damage to him as well. Is the uh, five percent spell amp and five minus five percent uh, spell cost is pretty good on Tinker. So, I'm just curious. Like as this game goes on, like who do you think actually has the advantage here? Is it going to be the cut or is Dog Champ actually just uh, is their draft just too good this time around? Hmm. -hmm. Like, what do you want to see from both teams here? Because I guess that's a better question. Yeah. Uh, Bloodseeker is working on a bash, and he's just got a BKB so far. I really do like that. He's able to hold people in place as he fights them. Uh, Spear Breaker is going to do a lot of damage this game. He's gotten 
BKB and Shadow Blade. He's got Aegis after queued up next. Don't mind that so much. Ooh, them. The arena top lane to try and get Luki. Might just regret that one. Whips him with the bull whip. Giant comp by a rupture. Stone Bank comes in, cleans that one up easily. I, one thing I am noticing, this rup, uh, well, we'll come back to it in a moment. Charge through onto the, the troll. Trying to find the uh, life stealer, but eh, he doesn't want to die at the tower. Uh, one thing I was going to say, Stone Bank with the uh, blood, blood Rage attack speed bonus plus the like Bloodlust attack speed bonus. He's going to just be perma bashing heroes. Did they just trap Stone Bank in wards? All right, he's got base speeds. Never mind. It's fine. Yarn just having a little haha. -ha. Yeah, he'll probably be uh, like perma bashing heroes. He has a lot of attack speed. It's really good with the Spear Breaker, though. There's your basher. It is done. He just picked up for Stone Bank on the Bloodseeker and a 9,000 gold advantage for the side of Dog Champ. I mean, they are really pulling away with this game. And even Yarin, I mean, he's got some items. He's got the Aether Lens. I think a Blink Dagger is being delivered. It is. So this Shaman is very scary. Yeah, but now in these team fights, his gold is you're going to be able to get uh, instantly on top of. The life stealer or instantly on top or wait until the tinker shows himself, jump him on the, the back line, doesn't keep him held in place. Cause if you can move even one of those heroes from the team fights now, you very easily win them. But you might just be able to just like run at you Dota as long as uh he's able to jump for those heroes in the back line with the Shadow Shaman. Given that he's got Aether Lens as well. Should be easy enough. Great Lisa, charge bottom lane, finds the life stealer, gets him with the nether strike. Luki happens to walk right in. To that meteor hammer and an overgrowth should be able to give SMD the ray of space he needs to get on out of this one. Pingu behind him. Ooh, Luki gets the rolling thunder cancel. DNM in. Catches him for the moment. Laser does come through, but will he be able to just chain? Oh, he's playing ping pong. Yes. Actually, kind of what he wants. Wait a minute. How no, he... no, 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 How no. How did he get up there? You can't do that. Luki still manages to find the kill, though. Nicely done. And now the charge back through Ray Lisa. Okay. I'm, I'm sure that you're not supposed to be playing Dota in this section of the map, but four kills for the side of Dog Champ. Uh. I mean, Tinker uh, going over the wall is probably the worst decision he could have made. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have a BKB yet, so he does end up uh, dropping these heroes pretty easily when he does that. But playing so far to the enemy side of the map inside their vision, uh, if they get blown up. And the strength of the Basher really came through in this team fight as well. I mean, you're supposed to be invincible during the rage, stand your ground and fight. But uh, all that attack speed, like you were mentioning, just bash several times, hit by... Uh, the bash on the Bloodseeker, the greater bash from the Spirit Breaker, and then followed up by another bash the Skull Banish on the Bloodseeker. So we've almost got that permanent bash we're talking about. And Tinker Control back up at the same time. Nobody else on the team is really putting out damage. And when both those heroes are disabled, there's no way you win these fights. Yeah. Well, the Dog Champ feeling stronger by the moment of 15,000 gold lead Stone Bank. He's fine bottom ping you. Going for a cheeky Meteor Hammer there. Luki almost died. That was so, so close. I mean, shout out to DNM who perfectly timed the BKB ending duration to get that spear. But that was very close to the Pango uh, surviving or like ac actually dying in the middle of that fight before he got to do the Rolling Thunder. All right, we are almost at the Aghanim Scepter of the Spirit Breaker. Stone Bank comes down to the backside, just instantly bashes up the Mars. A Hex comes through. They manage to get the kill. Scourge in trouble. Overgrowth does potentially save him for the moment, but Spirit Breaker, he's got another charge. It goes over to Giant. Luki's already here, ready to go. Can they actually just bring down both? Grimstroke will fall, but you're pretty deep. Bashing after bash. There's just not a lot you can do in kits. Caught by Yarn. He just jumps all the way into the base. Doesn't care. Shackles underneath the wards. He gets to kill Luki with the blink. Able to just chain stun more and more. And he's still got a swashbuckle to work with. Using the extended Rolling Thunder duration. Gets himself a triple kill. Is he just going to go oh for my. an ultra? Life Stealer can't survive. Luki! Oh my god. Give him the rampage. Pingu, you don't want to mess with this guy. This he's is. He's just going to go down to it. There it is. The rampage for Luki. Oh. You don't mess with this guy. This is his best hero. And yeah, give him the awoos, man. Uh, Just too good. 7,600 damage in the middle of that fight. Grabs himself 1,600 gold. So if you are uh, weren't worried about the Pangolier before this, it's about to get way worse because he's also queued up a basher. So... Life Stealer, you know, the idea is he just wants to stand his ground and fight heroes, but there are now three different bash sources this game.
Yeah, coming through on your magic immunity as well. DNM is down here in the bottom lane. He's afraid to show himself for even a fraction of a second. I mean, Rayleigh's has got his camera here. The moment he shows himself, he's getting charged. Oh, all right, never mind. Rayleigh's just stopped himself for a second. He caught the tinker though. Times it well, has nether strike, gets it, ends up dodging the spear for the moment. The question is, can he just get some bashes? He gets the blink out thanks to that, uh, like you said, the hamster ball, but inside the arena, just gonna bash him's face against the wall. Ends up falling in the process, a one for one so far. Is they're gonna continue to try and find the Tinker, but he's already TP'd home. Luki on the backside, gets himself a real quick kill there onto Johnny's. He's now beyond godlike at 11 and zero. Oh, man, it is popping off. I mean, last game uh, we saw him ban out uh, on the Pangalia. They picked up the Storm Spirit. I, I imagine no other team is going to let the Pang go through again. And this guy, he was saying that he feels like the hero isn't as good as it used to be. And he hasn't really enjoyed playing it so much recently. He's been playing a lot of other stuff. He would be a Grandmaster Pango if it again. was uh, still good, is the thing. <laughs> like, yeah. You know. Yeah. I think he's got uh, multiple accounts that are like past level 25, though. I did not know that. That's kind of funny. At least I'm pretty sure that's the case. Yarn, instant hex, finds the tree and protector, just waiting for him the whole time, and Luki helping secure that kill. Really smart play there from Yarn. Good patience. DNM, yeah, he's is... got an infested life stealer. Ooh, he just blinked right past him. Oh my gosh. Yaren indeed. with the schmooves. I mean, I guess he was just kind of predicting that he'd be somewhere around the trees and they might jump on him and but I don't think he knows how close he got to him. They can't go high ground here, right? I think they I mean, just wait got, for they've got wards. next Roche maybe, but they can chip towers. And Luki just goes in. He just kills Giant that fast. Oh my goodness. Um, All right, well, gonna I guess he can't go high ground. 4v5, it's that easy. Charge in, BKB comes through. He finds the Tree and Protector. Nether Strike is there. Luki already with the Rolling Thunder, trying to just chain stun down this Mars DNM. Oh, they catch the Life Stealer. Oh no, he doesn't even get a chance to pop the Rage. He is dead without buyback. This is exactly why uh, these disabled are just so good against a life stealer. He can't do anything. I mean, that time he couldn't even pop the rage, but even if he had, I mean, look at his death summary. He just stunned up by this Basher. <laughs> Every hero's got one. <laughs> Every, yeah, all, all of the heroes, all the cores have a bash, basically. Yeah. Taker doing his best to be able to defend from uh, further back into the base, but. I mean, this is the beginning of the end for them. Yeah. I didn't even have to wait for this Roshan, man. First lane of Barracks to fall, a 28,000 gold advantage on his way to the Mjolnir here for Stonebank. I mean, Ray Lalisa going for Refresher. Interesting, a lot of times we see the Kaya... Okay, he is going to go the Kaya Yasha first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where's Luke? Yeah, level 25. He grabs a Swashbuckle cooldown, of course. This talent, so incredibly strong. He's now queuing up a Satanic. Bottom lane. And the charge off of the Mars. The Mars ends up going down to the Shackles. Looking for more. Big overgrowth. Find some time. But they got the Shackles onto the Tinker. Yarn ready and waiting. But Kits will still get the blink out. Bloodseeker ends up falling a little bit too deep here. They're going to lose Ray Lisa as well. Two big kills. Luki gets signed up for the moment. Still has his BKB. His whole kit still available. Swashbuckle in one, can survive if he wants, but still just kind of playing with them. He's so tanky. Scourge McDuck might regret this. Oh, he pings pongs right into the wall. Not really where he wants to be. He got blink. He's looking for Giant on the backside, but can he actually get the... Okay, yeah, absolutely. He's got to get out, though. He's got to blink. <laughs> is he really gonna get away with this one? I mean, absolutely. He might just kill Pingu. No, he's gonna go back in. Yeah, I was like, he can just kill Pingu. Like, they don't have the damage to kill the Pangolier, especially once he has the damage reduction. He gets the bash onto Scourge. But Yarin has him to jump forward onto him. Not with the Mars behind him. If he tries to throw the shackles out to him, he's immediately just gonna get uh, Blink Yules. Dude, I, I mean, &M. Treant is literally zero armor against this Pangolier, so... It's like if he manages to catch you with a, a lucky shot, you're just in so much trouble. 
Okay, mid lane. Yarn tries to go and makes a play on the kits. Ends up getting uh, picked off instead. Luki with the BKB just gonna try and chase down the Tinker. He's out of mana completely. Bash comes through. Swashbuckle on one. Nice and fast to save him. Swashbuckle's away. Does have a blink in four, but a Yule's from DNM. He's gonna connect with the spear. If they can finally bring the Pango down, it would be huge. This man has gone the whole game without dying, and that is 966 gold going the way of Giant. Yeah. Ambitious TP. Not great that it ends up going the way of Grimsturk, but at the very least, I mean, you guys can start looking towards big things like, uh, I mean, I was going to say Aegon Scepter, but I guess there's no good heroes to uh, no. make a dark portrait of this game. Not this game at all. He is going yep. for a Blink Dagger, it would seem, but a, a lot of experience going the way of the cut on just those two kills. Almost 8,300. But uh, second Roche, I think a second Roche, yeah, has respawned, so they can potentially scout this out. You can go for the Shard. Um, there's a lot of good Shard pickups this game, uh, still for the side of Dog Champ if they want them. Yeah. I mean, uh, Luke, he's just been going straight at him, so he hasn't uh, made time for that one. Uh, also... I don't know, he's just been running at them so much, I'm not sure getting a defensive roll-up would have been that amazing, but... I don't know build so far. The Satanic is kind of insane, but oh, it does... Oh, uh... Tanker top lane! The charge is coming! Tries to make that blink away, but it's not gonna happen. Nether Strike comes through, Kits doesn't have the defensive matrix on him either. BKB comes out, Yarn the rotation on it, gets that Hex, but... An arena there to try and save him. Ray Lalisa goes for the charge away, but he's stuck inside the arena. Yules is going to purge it. Still got Bulldoze he can activate, but Ray Lalisa stuck inside the enemy base and suddenly Dog Champ kind of falling apart. So, uh, I don't know, man. Two big uh, swings in a row. I think feeling themselves a little bit too much after some of these plays, and I, I definitely think they should have just gone to the, uh, the Roche pit. I think that they're super excited to just close it out. They're a little bit worried about like, the ultra late game against the Lifesteal and the Tinker, but definitely take control of the map uh, and take the Roshan before trying to make a play like that one. That was way too ambitious. Lifesteal is going to go to the Roche pit instead. Tango's already back up. I mean, he might just go down again. The heroes on Dog Champ haven't been grouping up for the last little bit. I think after that last uh, death, it might have disciplined them. We bit. I mean, they can still use their abilities to play around the pit. They've got Blood Rite, they've got Pangoliers Rolling Thunder. So Stone Bank gonna try and force that. If he gets a bash here, SMD might be in trouble. Luki instead getting bashed up. Needs to be careful as SMD is doing a lot of damage. They managed to catch the Blood Seer on the backside. Hex is there. They've got to be able to catch them. A two hero stuck. There's gonna be the roll up. Chain stunning down the tanker for the moment, but. He's going to get caught by that uh, infest, giving him a plenty of health to work with. Kits, though, ruptured up. He finally falls. Luki Luki on the Pango gets executed by DNM. Four heroes dead on the side of Dog Champ as SMD still full health. Kits right back into this one. Yeah, I mean, got to give two was the Pangolier there, stopping him being able to continue to get off his rolling thunder. He was at least for such a long duration. And in a buyback to the game on the Ogre Magic, I'm not sure this is going to do anything, though. At the very least, creeps pushing into the enemy team's base. They'll damage up the, the buildings a little bit, but off this rover, I think they're gonna look to take more. Oh, they try to go in and find Stone Bank, but Lincoln's protecting him for the moment. Ray Lisa has to uh, pop that BKB and walk home. But yeah, they just get second Roche. They just got some big kills. They forced a buyback as well. They are looking good. You do have Aegis on Tinker now, so his buyback kind of being offset by that, which is nice. Yeah. Oh my god, he's got the Stroke of Fate talent. Look at that cast range. That is quite far. B9, caught out. And there is no chance he escapes from this one. Am I crazy or did Stroke of Fate go that far when it was released? Yeah, it definitely did not. <laughs> no, that was definitely just like a talent thing. I feel like it went pretty far on release, but maybe I'm misremembering things. SMD should be able to grab this mid tower without any uh, issues at all. They finally, 36 minutes in, have opened up outposts as they claim their first tier two tower. Oh man. Hey, Lisa on this Spirit Breaker starting to fall off a little bit in terms of damage. He charges in, clears up the Creep Wave, and will charge out eventually. Only well, just gonna walk away.
Mm -hmm. I was distracted by looking up stuff about Stroke of Fate. Not important, though. Alright. Look, he finally has the money for his Agadim Shard. We could probably purchase Here's going the into Spirit the next Breaker charging too. He's just zipping all over the map. Uh, that's funny. He doesn't have to be charging anything. He can just uh, go and farm up. The cooldown on Charger Doctors is super low. They find the triangle. Luki. They found Luki indeed. Hex is there. There's no way to save him. He's dead for a hundred seconds. He has not held his buyback. He is 600 gold away from it. In fact, I think he was probably trying to, to save up board. Is he didn't end up buying the Aegon Shard, but. He was indeed. I mean, the problem is he's, his last two deaths has just completely stopped his net worth growth. They get the scan. They, they, I mean, it connects with Yarn. He's at least under the cover of uh, Shadow Blade, though. However, B9 comes in, gets the stun out onto the Grimstroke. The Serpent Ward should be able to finish off Giant, and they do. You're going to lose the Ogre Magi for this one. I need a casualty. Yeah, they do end up getting the kill off on the group token. The lanes are pushed in as well, so at the very least, for the duration of uh, Pango's death, they're not accomplishing too much on the side of the cut. They have another two minutes with the Aegis as well, so I think they'll probably try to force a movement the moment, uh, either right now or the moment that Grimstroke comes back up. What's on the side of uh, Dog Champ to make a preemptive move, potentially? DNM's hunting. He's going to find them. The double spear. He ends up missing the tree, though. Ray Lalisa is going to be okay. Thanks for that. Yarin. The cover of Sil uh, Shadow Blade will be able to make it away. They just cut and run. They had nothing to do with this. Dude, if that Zero spear is... connected, that would have been a disaster. Yeah. I managed to get very lucky and get away from that one, though. Hey, Scooter Tech is working on Eye of Scotty. Do you feel like it's as good this game? Who is? Scooter McDuck. Um. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. I, I think he just needs more damage, but Aya Scotty does tank him up quite a bit as well. So it, it's not the end of the world. Like there's yeah. not a lot of like healing reduction he's using it against. It's just there's not a lot of rundown either. Yeah, it's just gonna tank him up a little bit, I think, and it's an item that gives him a little bit, a little bit of everything. Mm. All right. They're waiting patiently for the sages to expire they're just sitting inside uh their high ground inside the base 10k advantage is steadily going down it used to be much higher but they kind of started to bring it back i think at this point 36 seconds left on the ages you'll your smoke will expire oh, before they found ray lalisa underneath oh. the ward he's gonna be forced to bkb overgrowth is there does not have the bulldoze thanks to the ewels and i don't think he's charging out here anytime soon thanks to the bash Life still will grab himself a kill, and that is a big one. No space cow for 90 seconds, really far off his buyback as well. Yeah, disabled so long because of this overgrowth. I mean, he needs a second item for a dispel, it feels like. So good graph, man. This thing has been uh, downward trending for a while. We hit a peak right before the 30 minute mark, and then it has been all cut. Yeah. I think things will probably continue to go their way as well. <clears throat> Paladin sword found by the life stealer. And that's another thing going the cut's way. He's still sending it back to the uh, base though. It might be going to the train protector. Hey, he just keeps Penta Edge. It's way too good. This is where the maim got moved. So you now have the uh, an extra slow on there. Combined with the Aya Scotty, Wool Frenzy. You don't walk away from this hero now, unless you're Bloodseeker maybe. But. I don't want to see heroes walking away from people. I want to see them charging at each other. I want some more action. We've had a little bit too much downtime the last couple of minutes. They're, they're like pinging this Mars mid, but they know he's infested. He's just too dang fast. Buyback's now available for both Luki Luki as well as the Bloodseeker. So Stonebank making sure to hold his. Only a 9,000 gold, I mean, only, quote unquote, only 9,000 gold advantage, but this was like almost, what, 25,000 at one point, maybe more? Uh, I mean, less than that. I no, think it no, was like... It was 27,000. Was it really that high? It was 27,000 gold advantage at one point. Yeah. Ooh. 
It they had one percent win probability briefly. Yeah, 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 yeah. This game was almost all but in the bag here for Dog Champ, and now it's not that easy. We're gonna smoke up as four here on the side of Dog Champ. See if they can find someone. Power in spawns bottom. It's a regen, not super useful. Heading in the triangle. And finding Scourge would be massive. He sees them though. Rupture does come out. He's gonna try and you, I mean you can't TP. You're just up against a life stealer. There's gonna be Infest into the Mars. The nice arena trying to buy him a little bit of time, but on the backside, in comes Yarn. He gets the hex, holding that life stealer down, ping you big overgrowth from the high ground, uh, but they see you, bud. You <laughs> are all alone. That was uh, an excellent freeze frame, if nothing else, on that overgrowth, but uh, nobody was coming to help after he jumped in there. Yeah. All right, that is a big kill. Life Stealer dead, 480. No buyback, just short 690 gold here. Yep. Giant pop back in the game immediately as well. Just trying to keep these uh, lanes shoved in. At least uh, Roshan not responding yet, but uh, they're going to want to punish this. They don't know that he doesn't have buyback. Well, you have the better, uh, greater bash uh, chance now on uh, the Spirit Breaker, so that's very scary. Oh, a greater bash da uh, damage, sorry, not chance. Yep. He didn't take the chance talent at 20. Yep. He gets, uh, it's 25% uh, movement speed is damage added on, though. Yeah, it's yeah. not 25% increased damage, though. The number is going up significantly here. Roshan is responding fairly quickly, by the way. 17 seconds until it's back up. Let That's me see if scans it out. They'll have like 10, 15 seconds before the life sealer, but it doesn't look like they will They will know, so. Yep. Continuing to farm. And they're grouped up like they want to smoke out of base. They don't have any information from over there. Luki is sitting on so much gold. Looks like he's going to go for an Abyssal Blade, though. He had the shard queued up for a while, but I think realizing they need a little bit more lockdown. He changes his mind. He thinks better of it. He wants to be able to save. Uh, oh, has he changed his mind again? Illusion. Come on, Luki, don't do it. Okay, yeah. I think he wants to save for buyback gold. Oh, he is. I'm just saying he's still going to go for the Abyssal Blade, though. Yeah, yeah. It just looked like he was going to completely <laughs> ignore that one. Oh, I think I actually just bought a shine. Yeah, he did. Okay, smoked up. DNM infested in the mid lane. Are they going to find him the hex right away from Yarin? That's a surprise! They catch the life stealer as well! He's just getting permanently bashed! In comes the overgrowth from Pingu, but they find kits on the backside. That's the big one! They get the kill, no problem. SMD back to full health, but in come the bashes. Nice uh, soul bind onto two, but it doesn't really end up mattering. It's expired. The chain stuns in from the rolling thunder. The Pango kits comes in onto the Tinker, trying to do what he can. Roll up, able to chain stun down this life stealer. He's still alive, however. They get the dieback on kits, and now SMD. It's 1v3, but he gets a nice spear in from DNM, but it's not enough. They just able to hold him in place. Four heroes dead without buyback, and about to be a fifth triple kill for Stonebank, and the GG comes through. Finally, Dog Champ close out this game. A little shaky for a few moments, though. Yeah, uh, that that life stealer was disabled in that end team fight there. From uh, 41 seconds down to uh, 55. 14 seconds of hard lockdown on him from That's, a greater yeah. bash into a hex into shackles into pango stun twice and then he was disarmed afterwards he was not hitting anything there <laughs> yeah he finally came back and was like i got this and then no no he just gets yeah, bashed he again. didn't have it he didn't have it at all <laughs> no nah, i mean this was a game that was always in the hands of dog champ like they they basically like you said had 99 percent win probability just uh, before a couple uh misplays I mean, you there were, but we were a little bit worried for oh, a moment Oh, no, I mean, there, like, but... it was always in their hands. Like, this was their game to lose. I'm not saying they, you know, didn't almost lose it, but uh, very well done from them. Glad uh, they, they end up getting the victory here, because this would have been a real rough one for them if they actually uh, went the way of the cut. Yeah, standout performance from Luke Leakey on his Pangolier, of course. Uh, this us be a reminder to every team that ends up letting it through. They're probably a little bit less likely to do so again in the future. Uh, Dog Champ, of course. Uh, congratulations to them for taking the win over the cut, who managed to beat them out in uh, the first game here in the uh, qualifiers for this tournament, or yep. rather, the first phase of this tournament, which is basically like uh, a closed qualifier. Yeah, congratulations to Dog Champ for taking the series 1-1 and tying things up.
But uh, the fun thing here, though, is that's not it for the cut. They have one more series coming up next year against Wild Card. So we might get a little bit of a longer break uh, before we jump into our next and final series of the day, everyone. So stay tuned. We got more here on the BTS Pro Series Season 10. We'll see you in a bit.